it, it was a lot of fun. It's been a wonderful experience. There's a lot of neat history and, <laughs> and uh, a lot of neat people. And, and Lyda Watkins was here, and she's re relived a lot of memories. And there's just been a lot of folks reliving memories. And so it's been it's been great. Don't do that. Please don't do that. So it, it, it's a, it's it's been fun. You're ready for another one next year, just like it, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only if, if they'll accept it exactly the way it is right now. And that means we don't tear down what we've already done. <laughs> just lock the gym up. Just lock the gym up and it'll work out just fine. But yeah, no, it's, it's uh, uh, getting all the stuff back to the folks is going to be a job. But, uh, it'll be good. So is that already the time organized when they come and play near? Uh, there, there is a time for that, but a lot of them are, are stuff that's on loan, and they're expecting, I'm sure, to be, for them to be returned to them and stuff. So, so we'll have to box them all up and return them back. Uh, some of it came from uh, Catherine Kelly's collection and Anne Hemphill and, and those folks, so we'll have to get those all back to the library in good order. <laughs> That's because I know. Sunday should be crying. Margaret, we're about a minute 45 into the recording, okay. and we've got so far we've got just this exhibit. What about the fair in general and your your history with the fair and recollections? Well, I uh, as I. As I've stated before, I'm kind of one of the new kids on the block. I've only been here 32 years. So so my experience uh, uh, with the fair is uh, not so much community getting together, but I am very, uh, um, I'm very happy about the community spirit that goes into the fair. Um, that's one of the things. Uh, when my kids were growing up, we were always so... We felt safe. We felt community. We felt uh, wholesome, and uh, I think that's been denied a lot of kids nowadays. Um, I, like I said, I knew that if my kids got into anything, one of the ladies would just grab them and get them out of it. You know, I, I never worried about them misbehaving, or if they did, somebody would correct them. You know, so so uh, we didn't have. We didn't have anything violent. They would ride their bicycles down in the morning and stay all day, you know. And, and we, you know, you you give them, you know, a few dollars to buy something with, or and I'm sure it didn't go for good food. I'm sure it went for, you know, drinks and stuff. But you just didn't worry about it. So it, it, it was a. A, a, just a community spirit that, that uh, you don't find everywhere. Finland is our little piece of <laughs> Bob and Will were talking about uh, 100 years of fair activities, and you guys haven't seen the whole 100, but you've seen quite a bit. Can you tell us about where, what you've experienced at the fair? I guess we and got here. the community, I guess, in general. I guess we moved to Vinland in oh, about 1982, and uh, I've been at the fair just about every year uh, since that. Uh, Will was born in '93, is that 93. right? '93, and he's been at the fair too, so he probably had better, longer, better memories anyway. Uh, uh, I used to be part of the uh, Kansas Grassroots Art Association, and we used to cook uh, the dinners on Thursday night. We'd cook barbecue dinners for quite a few years uh, uh, in the 80s and maybe early 90s. Uh, the fair has always been uh, a great reunion and, and uh, neighborhood.
neighborhood event, uh, pet parade, and, and all the dinners, and just a good place to come and, and visit with your neighbors and the people you don't see uh, maybe a lot throughout the year, but you get to talk to them and, and uh, visit and uh, maintain relationships. Uh, so that's been really worthwhile. Uh, the non-commercialization of the fair is a real tribute, I think, to the people that run the fair and, and uh, people, uh, visitors to the fair really appreciate, I think, the fact that there isn't a lot of commercialization that goes along with it. It's really a, an old-fashioned uh, reunion and fair. Uh, what do you think about it? What, what are your remembrances of Oh, well, I've just always done the bike races and the pet parades and the kids stuff. And I don't know. It's always good pie, too. It's always good sure. pie. The best pie. Yeah, but with yours, you grew up in town. I grew up in Lawrence, and uh, so I can remember uh, as a Boy Scout, I was probably 11 or 12, riding my three-speed Schwinn bicycle out to Vinland and back, uh, and that was my first recollection of the town, I guess, yeah. uh, and, uh, uh, but we've always uh, enjoyed the way the little town looked and, and the feel of being out in the country, but at the same time being in a neighborhood, and uh, it was, it's, it's been a very comfortable place to live and, and uh, visually, so little has changed in town that uh, you could always imagine that you were in a different time period, uh, an older time period. Uh, and, and there's always been a good group of people that have been either in or close to Vinland, and we've enjoyed that as well. Yeah. Well, if you just, you've always lived down in the country here pretty much with it, so you've kind of got a different way of looking at it than your dad, I mean. Yeah, it's just always been here. It's just part of the summer. Yeah. Something you kind of look forward to every year. One of the things uh, that I've always done uh, is update, well, uh, originally uh, the little sign shop that I owned uh, made the Vinland Fair sign, and then every mm -hmm. year we update it and, and uh, that particular sign uh, has been uh, been used since the since about eighty four or five, and uh, uh, it's a hand painted sign which uh, now all the signage is computer cut vinyl or digitally printed, so it's kind of a throwback to the old days too. And and uh, uh, but it's always been nice to be a part of of the fair and, and help everybody's good about helping where they can. Yeah. So. It's kind of nice to still see your sign up there. Oh, isn't it, it sure is. Yeah. yeah, it's a treat. Could you talk a little bit too, because that Kansas Grassroots Art, that was in the Grange. You rented uh, yes. the bottom the floor bottom of the Grange floor, for a while. The bottom floor of the Grange Hall, and, and uh, uh, we were open on uh, some weekend afternoons a month uh, uh, and uh, had a little. Uh, museum there, but we were uh, one of the first groups uh, in the country to uh, uh, really uh, appreciate and, and uh, try to preserve uh, folk art uh, or uh, untrained mm -hmm. artists' work uh, that were prolific and, and uh, uh, so that was, that was another good thing, neat thing about Vinland. Yeah. Uh, and, and being in the Grange Hall was really nice, too. Uh, I can remember one Saturday morning uh, after a bad storm on a Friday night that blew half the roof off the Grange Hall, um, several of us from the art group uh, got my sign shop's crane truck out of the shop and, and came back and uh, put the roof back on so that uh, uh, if it rained again right away, at least it was protected. <laughs> and then later on, we 
fixed it properly, but uh, uh, it's been fun to be part of the community. That's just a community thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, we appreciate you doing this. Well, thank Thanks. you. You said this is your dad? Yeah. And this is George Rockhold? Yes. And your name is? Buck. Buck Rockhold? How long have you been coming to the fair, Mr. Rockhold? Since early 50s. Did you used to do the tractor pull or do anything that was a little bit different? Yeah. What's the earliest thing you remember about the fair? Yeah. With the, what brings you back? Makes a difference, doesn't it? So, Mr. Rockhole, I appreciate it, and I'm glad that we had your picture of your daddy there with you. I'm not going to get like questions for me to answer. Okay, Donna. <laughs> To die, or now, this year you made, what, 85 pies? I made 85 pies this year. I was going to make 100 because it's been 100 years, but they don't need any more pies. So today I do not have to make pie, and I'm very happy, actually. Now, the fair, though, is known for its pie. It is more than anything. Well, one of the many things it's known for is its excellent homemade pies. Ladies all over the community start baking all week. I'm sure they're baking probably even before that. This year I actually froze some pies. I've never done that. But the lady said they'd be okay, so I did that with the oh, yeah. pies. With that. But now, usually on Friday nights, too, it's chicken and noodles, homemade noodles yes. that the ladies do. Excellent. And today is brisket, and that's so wonderful. We used to make fried chicken. There we go. Fried chicken. We made fried chicken for several years, and um, it was a big job, but I really enjoyed doing it. I worked with Sandra Lawson, and um, it was just a very fun thing to do. We love making it. But, you know, that's, again, it's a community Absolutely. Event. Yeah, nothing can be done without everybody helping it. You know, even today I see people just get here early and they're setting stuff up for the day and we don't always notice them because everything's always ready when it's time for things to start. But you know, with the, the work never ends for the fair board. They just yeah. start working constantly. Now, how long have you been out here, though, that you've participated in Well, the I've been here about 27 years. Yeah. We've been coming every year and uh, we really love it. Great place for the kids. Probably the most fun for me is just seeing all the kids come and be kind of free to run around and have a good time. Now, there is a connection that goes further back with your family that yes. you're here yes. and such. And so now here you've just brought your granddaughters. I have. And such. So it's a continuing. It was so fun for me to see them running around on the stage this morning, just like my kids used to, and jumping up and being in the pet parade. And we brought our puppy today. So. It's great that it just continues to be a very um, low-key, relaxing, and yet very fun fair. Yeah. So how many pies are you going to make next year? Gee, uh, you know, it's going to be 101. Maybe I'll just make one. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Donna. Thank you. That was so... Okay. Nora, let's hear you. <laughs> I first came to Douglas County in the fall of 1946 and attended my first Midland Grange Fair in 1946. I don't remember much about it except that it was quite different from my little county fair from the part of Kansas that I came from. Where did you come from, Moore? Uh, I came from Sedan, Kansas, Chautauqua County. Okay. The fair was much larger and it was a county fair complete with carnival, etc. Oh. Uh, my first real work with the fair was I was a journalism student at KU, and my dad, in the first few years he was here, became secretary of the fair, and so he put the fair book together. Well, I was a journalism student, and you know that. He pulled me in, and I have been associated with him, except for about nine or ten years in the uh, late 50s and early 60s. I've had to do with the fair, putting the fair book together and gathering the information for it. Uh, then after we moved to the farm, or I moved to the farm, and after Miles and I were married, then what I did was um, I began to enter things at the fair, and I joined the, one of the homemakers' units, and therefore I made chicken and 
cream chicken for that and pies. Uh, I guess I probably have made pies for the fair since the late 1950s. Then in 1985, Miles and I were elected co-presidents of the fair, and at Miles' insistence, that fair board for the first time included women. Mm. That's the first time? That was the first time. The women were very active, but they were not uh, included on the board. And Miles insisted that women be included. So we became president and served for 13 years. And during that time, the fair grew because there was a kind of a resurgence of interest in the fair. And the volunteerism flourished. We had lots of people. Because it was really pretty different when you first came here in 46 then, oh, as to what it was now. It was more like a reunion. I remember that on Saturday nights, we always dressed up. Mm. And when you read the old letters, they told about that you always had new clothes in the general affair. Uh. Of course, at that time, when I first came, it had always been held in September or early October. Now, was that because of the, the harvest time? Because of the harvest time. Because they were able to finish the harvest fairly close yeah. and then have the fair. I've tried to persuade the board to go back to that, but there are so many school activities and other activities mm -hmm. now that when the fall officially begins, after Labor Day, uh, it's so crowded, so yeah. they've been reluctant. It does make a difference, though, in what gets entered because you don't have as many produce things that are ready to uh, to show. It's true. They tell me that the flowers might be more sparse. Mm -hmm. Now, my mother, uh, going back to my parents, my mother was superintendent of the over all the home departments and of course always participated in affairs and what I remember about the food stand and my mother was the the homemakers unit always served one day and that's where our affiliation with chicken dinner began was with them. They would serve creamed chicken which was actually chicken in a gravy mm -hmm. over mashed potatoes and there were a number of the older women in the homemakers unit who would peel some, oh, 10, 15 pounds of potatoes and mash them and rush them right down to the fairgrounds. And my mother was one of those women who always made mashed potatoes. Yeah, your mother's name, tell me. My mother was Leela Temple. Yes. Florence Hoskinson was another, and I think Bertha Wilder too, uh -huh. always made the mashed potatoes. And 30 pounds of potatoes makes a lot of mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. And of course, they didn't serve the numbers. Yeah. Uh, the tractor pull began in 1962. Miles was on the initial committee for that. Another one that I remember was Jerry Moore. Oh, Mr. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tractor pull was very small. It was hometown, very hometown. And of course, it has grown and grown and grown. Oh, yeah. Okay. To a large now, you said too that there seemed to be a resurgence in the 80s. Um, so, from like the mid 60s until then, it seemed to have died out. Is that? Well, what was happening, there is an important event that happened at that time. The Vinland Grange began to lose membership. Uh, there were so many other organizations and school activities that began to take the interest of younger people. And the Vinland Grange became an organization with a group of quite elderly people. Mm -hmm. And when it became evident that they were losing their ability to do community projects, they began to rely more and more upon the community to assist, and the community responded very well. Mm -hmm. But some of the wiser heads in the Grange decided that it should become Vinland Community Affair. So in 1977, they were officially in reincorporated as a non-profit community corporation, mm -hmm. and they pay their license fee every year yeah. for that. Then, uh, but the fair 
struggled, yeah. continued to struggle. And by the fall, and when the, after the Grange closed, in, I believe it was 1984, then the Granger said, we've got the, uh, they were still the officers, mm -hmm. and they said, we've got to have new blood. So in the fall of 1985, there were a group of us elected to the board. And um, it, it was an important transition because we were younger, we brought new blood, yeah. and we put the word out, we made it quite public that the fair was struggling to survive. Yeah. And so that's, and it was, I think the word was amazing, yeah. how the community responded. There were women made pies that I didn't know could make pies. <laughs> And, and it's special, pies. yeah. And those pies were pure donation. Yeah. And gradually, people like uh, Donna Babbitt Cavanus came into the food stand, and we changed the whole order of how it was done. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, cream chicken became chicken and noodles then too, didn't it? And cream chicken. Oh yes, we we went to first. We went to chicken and noodles, and again. The homemakers unit made the noodles and continues to until yeah. this day with the help of the community. Yeah. Uh, at first, I cut up all. When Donna proposed fried chicken, I was very frightened about the safety of it. I think we started with 10 chickens, <laughs> and we served all 10 chickens the first day at noon. So we hurriedly went to town and bought, I think. 15 or 20, and I can remember Talitha, Bailey, and I standing in the kitchen in full view of the line of people waiting to be served, cutting up chickens <laughs> yeah. that were being fried on the spot. Uh -huh. And served. But the, the smell was so delicious oh, yeah. that they sold out. And for a number of years, we sold fried chicken, but it was so labor intensive and grew so large that we had to alter the menu again. Yeah, but now Friday, uh, the uh, Friday night is chicken and noodles. I mean, people come all the way from Lawrence and oh, yes. Olathe, Kansas City, Olathe, and everything Baldwin, come in for it. But, you know, that's the thing of it. Um, the little town of Vinland has changed. It's not as big as it, it did in 1907 when the, the oh, no. fair started. But the community has gotten larger. Oh, yes. You know, the surrounding and all. And for the people to feel that, that connection to say Well, yes. that's one of the interesting things about the fair is that they have, the fair organization itself has been able for no particular reason of any one individual it has continued to grow and draw in new people mm -hmm. last night I was sitting there eating my dinner and looking in the stand and it was filled with more than half people that I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are new and are being drawn in, and that's what's going to say. Well, after a hundred years, like you said, it might have dipped a bit, but it's still strong. It's probably as strong or stronger than what is on And what's interesting is how much goes into the preparation of this fair. And the first fair was planned in two and a half months. Wow. It's just amazing what you can do when you feel like it's something you need well, to do. Well, so. those people really wanted it to happen, and yeah. that's what continues to happen. So with that, if there's one thing that you remember best about the fair, from the time you came until now, if somebody said, what's the one thing that keeps you wanting it to go on, what is it? I think it was over 900. Well, you've limited too much. I don't know that I could tell you one thing. Give me two. Okay. <laughs> Tradition. Yeah. That's probably it. Yeah. Tradition. Still there. For you, your grandchildren, your kids, all of it comes on down, doesn't it? Well, and for the area. Yeah. It's a historical area, and this is an institution that has been here since 1905. This one is unique. There are very few range fairs that survive, and there were literally hundreds. So, we're 
we're pretty special out here, then would you we're say? Very special. Very special. All right, Mary Gensler, Hicks Gensler. Right. And when was the first time you started working with the fair? I started working with the fair in 1988. Now, why did you start then? Well, we moved back to the area in 1986 um, after my late sister died in 1986. Um, we built a new house here and got back in the Vinland community, but I was um, active with, have always had something to do with the fair since uh, I was in high school, which uh, is in the 50s. <laughs> Um, but um, I started in 88, and in 91, I became the treasurer of the fair. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it grow to all different capacities. Um, it um, sometimes gets overwhelming to, to see what it does, but we've gotten the t-shirts, um, the pins and the hats and the like of that and, and aprons and the like of that that, mm -hmm. uh, that we, we put a new design on each year that match our pins. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Oh yes, you got your pin on. So, Let's yeah. get this. And this is a special one because it is uh, the centennial. Right. Oh yeah, there we go. And I know that there was a contest to design the pins this year. Right. The fellow that, um, uh, that designed it is over here. He's here right now, uh -huh. as far as that goes, and he took pictures of the other ones that uh, that were entered in the contest. But it was a very exciting thing to, to be able to choose to see the uh, different designs, what people thought and what they wanted to highlight and the like of that. So because on this pin this year, it is pretty important, it has the Grange building itself and then the fair barn. Yes. So it has the two connections when it started as the Grange fair. And right. it's now developed into the community fair. Right. With community, it, so. Yes, it's very much a community fair. The uh, association was formed in 1986, so um, or 85, late 85, I think the association uh -huh. started. That uh, because of the Grange had closed, I think in 77. Yeah. So. With that, so um, you've usually worked in the. In the the pop concession, stand. the pop stand. The pop stand, selling uh, all of the shirts, the uh, and pop and ice cream and candy to the kids. Uh, it's so amazing that they come up and just say, "I want that," and mm -hmm. point to it. Uh, you've got lots of things that <laughs> can go to. You try to follow the finger. Oh yeah, yeah. That's always been a big part of the fair. Oh my though. yes, uh -huh. that the kids. The kids get to have fun. That's, yeah. that's what.